Ahoj, this is Denka. How to film a B-roll in cinematic mode on iPhone 14 Pro or 14 Pro Max handheld. In this video, I'm gonna go through settings, take you behind the scenes, show you all the moves, and we will edit the final B-roll directly on iPhone. pulled out cinematic mode on a smartphone already and right now we are about 12 noon it's the worst time of the day to film at but I'm dealing with a little bit the timing because I don't live here I have to travel here for over an hour and I also need to be back later on so that's the only time I can really film at but still we are getting an amazing day it's very very sunny everything looks just very picturesque so the settings i'm going to be using on iphone 14 pro is filming at 4k for f-stop for the aperture i don't really have to care much right now because everything will be done mainly after i take the clips then i will play with the aperture settings after and i'm gonna review every single clip and ensure that i have the right aperture selected and where i want it to be so right now i'm gonna go actually with suggested aperture which is f 2.8 there is a white dot so i'm gonna leave it at that um, and exposure i'm finding that iphones are always overexposing a little bit so what i would like to do just to retain all the dead data in whites to bring the exposure a little bit down so i'm gonna hit the exposure bar and instead of zero i'm actually gonna keep it at minus one that way when i'm going to be working with it in a post i can still bring the shadows up but i'm not going to lose anything in whites i'm going to have a lot of data there i'm not going to have any overexposed image so i think we are ready and uh, it's time to take some shots before i take the first shot there is one more setting which i forgot to mention which should be definitely enabled on your iphone 14 pro and that would be going to camera record video and making sure enhanced stabilization is on as we know this will definitely help to film handheld when you are filming in a cinematic mode the first shot will be revealing this location and the type of lenses you can use in cinematic mode are standard one-time lens three times telephoto or selfie camera these are lenses and cameras i'm going to be using most of the time standard camera and right now I'm not going to lock the focus on anything. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I'm gonna be revealing this little lake. So I'm gonna go deep into the plants. I have to make sure I don't see a shadow of my hands right in the plants, going backwards, and then slowly going up, revealing the location. Moving on onto another shot. Right now I'm gonna be doing shot where I'm gonna be walking towards the lake. I'm fairly confident that the enhanced stabilization is pretty good. I'm gonna go forward. The only thing I have to really pay attention is framing. So I enabled grid lines. As you can see, the top line is on the shore across the lake. And if I'm gonna go very low, the chairs are kind of covering the shore is not looking that great i would like to see the chairs but i would like to also see the um, the beach on the other side i'm not going to lock any focus again because i would like to decide on the proper focus as i'm going to be filming so i'm going to go ahead and create the first shot I'm not going to move to another place as yet. I really like the chairs so much and to get a very different look, I'm going to select now three times telephoto. Now, because obviously when you are filming with telephoto, you might introduce a little bit more shake. So I'm going to use my elbow and my knee to stabilize, to get another point of stabilization. And that way I can ensure that the stabilization is a little bit better. 
This time I'm going to lock the focus. So I'm going to tap on the chair and hold. This way now the focus is locked. So wherever I'm going to move, the chairs will be always in focus. If I decide to do focus pull, I'm going to do that later on once I review the clip. So let's go ahead, go ahead and just film the clip. I'm going to go from left to the right. And I'm going to try to do this shot again because I was moving a little bit too fast. Whenever you're shooting with telephoto, you need to make sure that you move very slowly. I had no time to explain what I am doing because the boat is not gonna stop. <laughs> so I was tracking the boat. When I was filming, I double tapped and I enabled tracking on the boat. So the boat was always in focus and I was simply following through the chairs um, to bring a little bit more color, to make it more interesting while I was revealing the boat here and there. As I was going through the chairs, filming the boat, I always like to take at least two shots of an object in case I need to bring different angles and because you, you could tell that there were chairs in that one shot but you didn't really see what kind of chairs they were maybe you are interested to see a little bit more what is really sitting on the beach here so I am facing the sun because when you're filming with smartphone and you have your sun in a back if you are filming detail shots it kind of looks a little bit flat I'm gonna show you in a little bit how it would look like if I would be filming with sun in my back but if you are filming facing the sun, you are going to get a little bit more of an interesting look. It's not going to look that flat. So I'm filming with a standard lens. I don't have to do anything with the exposure because it's still on minus one. It's not overexposed. And I am going to keep the focus on the last chair in a row. And I'm simply going to just follow the shapes of the chairs. This first shot is done with just standard one-time lens and I locked the focus right on this plant on here and I'm going up and just very slow movement down. I'm fighting a little bit with the shadows and light because it is noon, it's a very harsh light. So if you see me a little bit too dark, sorry, I'm trying to do my best to explain you exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna show you one shot now, which would be very tempting, I think to majority of the people, a lot of beginners. So they would do simple shot like this. Just revealing the lake from behind. The problem with this is not that you see my big camera in a shot, but you also see your hands and fingers in a shade, in a shadow, and you don't, you don't want that. So I have a better solution. I'll go around. And I'm going to start here in a shade, revealing the location over there. First of all, I'm gonna see the texture so the lens I'm using is just standard one time and I'm very slowly going up, revealing the location over there. Mm -hmm. 
since I used the chairs in the previous shots and also the big chairs here uh, on the lake, I'm gonna find another detail shots, but different. And I saw this beautiful boat here. So when you film kind of, you know, standing next to the boat, it's just an okay shot. But if you go a lot closer to the surface of the boat, you it will immediately see a reflection. So anything over there, it's gonna be reflecting in the side of the boat. So I'm gonna be filming with just standard lens, trying not to drop my phone in the lake, <laughs> which is my big fear. And I am going to just leave the focus un unlocked. So as close to the possible to the boat, going a little bit lower and going forward. And since I'm already here, I'm going to grab just one more detail shot of the boat, just so we have different view. As I said, always shoot one object twice. Structure, structure, structure. Plain shots are okay, but look for anything with a structure and texture on it. The more complicated, the better it is. The dark and the bright background is amazing contrast. So what I'm going to do here, again, still filming with standard lens, and I'm just gonna pan to the right, but I'm gonna make sure I'll go through all these little hooks and, you know, whatever you call it. So let's go pan to the right. Now I'm gonna go from the top to the bottom and I'll show you what's on top. On top you see this little texture, which I really like. To show you one clip with locked focus, this is how it's gonna look like. One more complex shot will happen right here. I know that this is probably gonna really depend how much experience you have with the camera. And I do realize that other people who are not experienced with a the camera, they would see only the beautiful location. They would not really think about something like this window, the empty space here. Instead of me filming just a regular shot this way, I'll show you how I'm gonna go through this opening and these little windows. All these little details are gonna create a frame and the framing will be very interesting. So standard lens it is. I am going to lock the focus for the distance this time. And I'm going to go slowly through the window. to move myself a little bit here. I'm going to grab two more shots of these chairs here. And since I already shot them this way, I would like to kind of cover almost 360. So I'm gonna shoot from the top. I'm gonna also shoot the very, very bottom. So the first shot I'm gonna do is very simple. I'm using the texture of the chairs and I like this yellow one. It's just brighter and it's got more beautiful texture. So I'm gonna go from the top and just gonna spin it, rotate it. And I'm gonna do that again, making sure I'm not seeing my hands as a shadow. So now I am at the very, very bottom, shooting against the sun, so it's not looking flat. I am not going to lock the focus and just go extremely low to the ground. I 
I'm going to finish this location, this place with the last shot and I'm actually gonna ask my friend Frank here for help because this is a very risky shot. I'm gonna be backing up and as you can see there's a flowers and pot. I don't wanna trip and do a backflip to the lake and phone and myself and everything so <laughs> it's gonna be my safety there. So whenever you're filming at you know, a risky location like this and you have someone next to you, just ask them for a little favor, a little help so they block you so you don't accidentally end up in a in the water and uh, I'm going to lock here the focus on a far distance and using just a normal lens I'm gonna practice one shot so I'm not gonna reveal the chairs yet I'm just seeing the lake and slowly go backwards all right I'm gonna do it again I do have enough of a shots of this location than enough I need. I'm gonna go and start editing them on the phone. I'm gonna take you through the process, but I think that we need to thank Steve and Julie yep. for allowing us to be on this location, their property. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Julie. It's just amazing, beautiful place. I'm back in the studio. Everything is already edited, but I screen recorded everything so I can go back now and show you some of the most important parts and tips. First, let's go into editing clips in cinematic mode where you can adjust the aperture and you can change the focus. The first clip you're looking at is the shot where I was shooting through the structure right above the boat and here the aperture is not holding very well, it's changing continuously. It's not the same like optical aperture, you, you cannot lock it the same way, it's digital. So meaning it's not bad, it's good, you just have to do a little bit more work and in post you have to kind of rewatch the clip many times and tap on the areas you want in focus. So that way the focus will change as you are, as you are moving through. As you can see I'm adding a lot of keyframes. Those keyframes are holding the focus in place. And all you have to do is pretty much rewatch the clip all the time, see if it is already changing the way you want and if it is already locking up the area you would like to see in focus. So now when you play the whole clip you can see where the focus locks are and how it is changing. All right, next clip is where I am going down and just showing off the plant. Now, this whole clip, I'm going to leave focus unlocked. The only thing I have to change is the aperture. As it was at f2.8, it was way too low and you can see the edges of the plant very smudged. It's not looking great. So I had to increase the aperture to f5.6 or even more f8 i believe yes f8 or even higher f11 so f11 it is so now you can see the edges of the plant are in focus is looking way better the video editing app i chose was in shot i also love luma fusion but it's just very difficult for me to see everything on a very small iPhone. I prefer iPad for that app. On iPhone, I really do like InShot as it has very good selection of transitions and there are already sound effects for those transitions, which I'm gonna show you shortly. So once I chose the music and this time I didn't go for very classical music, I just wanted upbeat and fun, still kind of summer, even though we are entering fall now, I started editing the clips to the music. The first thing I always do is just import all the clips on a timeline and then as I am playing the music I can re reposition the clips. All you do is just tap and hold the clip and now it turns into small square and as you can see you can drag it to the front. So you can change the position of those clips. Once I had it in a rough position, in a rough order then I started actually editing on the beat. When you are recording with a smartphone you are obviously recording sound as well and 
For those who are not familiar with InShot, there is a way where you can turn down the volume, you can get rid of the audio and just keep the visual on all the clips at the same time. You can do it first just on one clip and then you can apply it to all. So now when you play the clips, you're not gonna have any sound to it. You can add the music on top. Transitions, there is quite a big of a selection of transitions in shot. And as you can see, I've been going through this edit and just chose maybe two or three different transitions on the whole B-roll. And the first one, I decided to do this kind of a light streaks effect. And the nice thing about this is that you can also choose how long you want the transition to play. Once I was finished with the transitions, I added sound effects to those transitions and they have quite nice, actually simple library there where you can select it. You just select the one you like and drag it on top. You can also make it louder or you can make it a little bit quieter. I went tiny bit louder because you could not really hear it with the music. But again, I don't want the sound effects to overpower the music. Once I had the clips in order already edited to the music, I had the music there. I had the sound effects from transitions and transitions. Last step would be a little bit of a color grading. There are quite a few controls you can use in InShot and I chose to go with HSL panel and I was just working with different colors separately. There is no rule here. You have to go with what you like, what's your taste to color. So I was just playing around and see what the different combinations can do. I was playing with blue tones, with green tones, a little bit of orange tones. As you can see, I'm dragging a little bit the green up and also the blues. I'm not too much of a fan of the um, orange teal look, but adding a little bit of warmth to the blue is, is kind of nice. Next, I switched to saturation and here I did very minor adjustments, almost none. And obviously luminance was the other one. This is where you can make the color very rich and very deep. Once you edit one clip, just like with the volume, to erasing the audio from all the other clips. You can also apply the same look to all, which is quite nice. You don't have to go through clips separately. You can color grade, adjust the colors at the same time. So now that the whole sequence is already done, finished all together, let's just play it. Thumbs up if you like today's video and don't forget to subscribe for more. More outdoor filming tutorials are coming up. We will also go into photography with iPhones or smartphones in general. If you have any questions, comments, or simply want to say hi or ahoy, you can leave it below and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ahoy. I have a help here today. <laughs> Frank is helping me. He's working the Insta360 camera, having a lot of fun. A little bit of a hands-on experience. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of fun. One, two, three.